it is important to know how to control bleeding in an emergency. Taking the proper action quickly at the scene of an accident can save a life. Bleeding or hemorrhaging from wounds at certain points in the body can cause death quickly. If the principal arteries of the neck, arm or thigh have been severed, death from hemorrhaging may occur in one to three minutes. A rupture or cut of the main trunk of arteries of the chest and abdomen can cause death in less than 30 seconds. To more effectively treat a person who is bleeding, some knowledge of the body's circulatory system is helpful. This system consists of the heart, the arteries, the veins, and the capillaries. Through this system, the blood is carried to and from all parts of the body to supply nourishment to the body's tissues and to remove waste products. If the supply of blood is cut off for an extended period of time, the tissues in that part of the body will die. The blood is moved through the circulatory system by the pumping action of the heart. The heart keeps the blood flowing steadily under pressure to the most remote tissues in the body. The heart contracts about 72 times a minute. These contractions, or heartbeats, cause the blood to pulse through the body. This pulsation can be felt and can be best measured at pressure points such as the wrist. Pure blood leaves the heart through a large artery called the aorta. It branches off through smaller arteries to different parts of the body. These branch arteries narrow and spread into thread-like vessels known as capillaries, which extend into all the body organs and tissues. After the blood has furnished oxygen to the tissues and organs of the body, it collects the waste products and carbon dioxide and returns to the heart through a network of blood vessels called veins. As it returns, it passes through the kidneys, which act as a kind of purifying plant, removing the waste products. When the blood reaches the heart, it is pumped into the lungs where the carbon dioxide and any remaining volatile waste matter is exchanged for oxygen. It then returns to the heart where the cycle begins all over again. When blood oozes slowly from a wound, capillaries have been cut. There is little cause for alarm here since the amount of blood that can be lost is small. The application of a sterile pad or bandage to the wound will normally stop the bleeding and allow the blood to clot. When dark red blood flows from a wound in a steady stream, a vein has been cut. The carbon dioxide and other waste products in the blood give it a dark color. To slow the flow of blood and promote clotting, apply sterile gauze or a compress directly over the wound. If bleeding continues, apply pressure to the vein at a point below the wound, on the side of the wound away from the heart to shut off the flow of blood. When blood spurts from a wound and is bright red, an artery has been cut. The oxygen in the blood gives it a bright red color. The flow from an artery comes directly from the heart and will pulsate with the heartbeat. It does not clot easily and the flow is fast and strong. To help the blood clot, it must be slowed down either by applying pressure directly to the wound or by temporarily squeezing the artery shut at a point between the heart and the wound. There are 22 pressure points in the body, 11 on each side, where digital pressure can be applied. At a pressure point, the artery passes close to the surface of the skin and also over a bone. To control the bleeding, you apply pressure, squeezing the vessel against the bone at the pressure point on the side nearest the injury. Let us consider arterial bleeding from a scalp or head wound first. Here, the temporal pressure point is used to control arterial bleeding in the head area. It is important that this point be used for brief periods only as it can cut off blood to the brain and cause damage if held for an undue period of time. To stop the flow of blood from a cut in the face, the facial pressure point is used. 
This point is located in the notch along the lower edge of the bony structure of the jaw. The carotid pressure point will control major bleeding of the artery as it passes through the neck. It is the principal source of blood to the brain. It also should not be used for more than a minute or two. The pressure point that should be used only in extreme cases, such as amputation of the arm, is the subclavian pressure point. It is located deep behind the collarbone in the sink of the shoulder. To reach it, you must push your thumb through the thick layer of muscle at the top of the shoulder near the neck and press the artery against the collarbone. For wounds just above the elbow, the brachial pressure point in the upper arm or the axillary pressure point in the armpit are effective. Here, the artery just under the upper arm is pressed against the bone from underneath. One of the most effective pressure points for cuts on the lower arm is the brachial point at the elbow. This is where the artery is very close to the surface as it passes over the large elbow joint. To control bleeding from a wound on the hand, the radial and ulnar pressure points at the wrist may be used. There are two, so both must be used at the same time. 